sixties and you can turn the echo off, please. And um, what happened was that we were uh, we had these three songs and we were quite successful in, in playing around the clubs in London. And one of the things that we actually managed to still the echo is still on. Isn't that funny? When I want it on, it's on. <laughs> uh, one of the, uh, the things was um, when we were travelling around the country. Um, doing shows and we'd actually managed to work ourselves up to have been really uh, wet and rainy and uh, cold and, and uh, to say the least, there hadn't been the greatest attended shows we'd ever done. So um, we were looking forward to playing at the Marquee Club in London because Cliff Bennett and the Rebel Rousers had a number one hit with uh, the Paul McCartney's Gotta Get You Into My Life. And we thought, well, that's good. That's going to pull a few people in. And the way the, the business went to the marquee, they gave the opening act a little a percentage. I, I didn't know they ever let the marquee club it, it, it be used uh, for, you know, to bands to come in to rehearse. And, you know, they were up there and they were trying to learn this riff. And the guitarist was trying to teach the bass player this riff. And, and I was sitting there saying, it's only five notes. It's taken about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> them to, them to and then uh, at a certain point I got bored and I walked out and I found the, the under manager uh, of, the, of the club who had arrived and I said, Jack, and he goes, I really don't know anything about it because he was, you know, he was of a certain sort of um, gay lifestyle and he used to have a late night, he wasn't up really very early in the day and um, so he, he, he said, oh, I'll, make a, I'll make a call and I'll find out and um, what happened was he called the, the office and they said, Oh, yeah, and then he came back to me and he said, no, that's the head band that's headlining here tonight. And I said, but Jack, I've watched them for 20 minutes. They're trying to learn this one riff. <laughs> But, you know, they finished their um, rehearsal and we set our gear up in front of theirs. And I go into the dressing room and uh, after and changing my guitar strings, and while I'm in there, um, the two interesting points about this. Uh, this guy comes in to talk to me uh, about, you know, bass guitars. Now, guitarists in those days didn't talk to bass players at all, ever. Um, because, you know, was the, they were a clique to themselves and we were a clique. Ten more notes of them in those days, which was like half of a pound. And it was just like taking this big one. Jack, what's going on? He goes, I still don't know. I still don't know. <laughs> and I got back to the dressing room. Now, what's interesting about the way the marquee was configured in those days it, uh, uh, is that they, it had mainly standing room in a kind of a, an oval pattern. And, and they had like 40 chairs uh, in the front where, you know, I guess on a slow night, that's probably all the people that would be there. So we'd like to, uh, <laughs> oh my God, this, this is like a fucking dream. <laughs> <laughs> or a nightmare, whichever way you might want to think about it. So uh, we played through our set and we got polite applause after every song and, you know, we didn't go for anything and, you know, and everyone seemed to be applauding us. And later, when I got to know Pete Townsend a little bit, because of yes, well, for the who a few times, I said, Do you remember that band I was in, The Sin, that opened that night at the market? <laughs> 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 anyway, so um, we finished our set and um, uh, went off stage, and it was so packed in the, in the club. I, I think the other guys somehow squeezed out. I opened the dressing room door, I couldn't even open it. The people were jammed against it, and I just went, All right, I better go and see what the fuss is about. So actually, I went on stage and um, sat on the piano at the back. And then. Uh <laughs>
as I cast my eye about the crowd, uh, especially my idols of all time, you know, the Beatles, the Stones, and I'm, I'm just thinking, wow, man, I can see why they're disguised. And then I'm looking at them, and most of them are like ecstatic. And I say, Eric Clapton, thinking, hmm, I am God still, aren't I? Or maybe, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. We'll addend them to the story, and I've said this on a couple of nights, not every night, but you know those chicks, he went down to the, at the later club afterwards, they uh, never spoke to you. <laughs> I was on that stage with Jimi Hendrix, I tell you. It was worth a fortune. In <laughs> 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 yeah, of course I'm saying, yeah, me and Jim, yeah, we talk about both. Anyway, back to... They went off, and about two months later, they wrote and recorded Sergeant Peppers. They're <laughs> 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 still waiting for royalties, I'm not sure. Okay, we're going to play uh, another. Uh, Chris Squire, incidentally. <laughs> 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 